This is the start of the second season of Meandering Conversation in Takispian with me. And I have here gathered my two very dear friends, Inma and Matthew, who are part of my creative community, the community that was kind of spawned coming out of the creatives workshop and a Kimball workshop in the summer of 2020. And funnily enough, neither Inma nor Matthew has taken the creative workshop. They weren't in that first cohort, but they are very much a part of the creative community. And when I had when I started to think about the second season, you know, who do I, how do I, et cetera. I was in one of the problem solver sessions in this creative community with me and my and Matthew. And that was not the first time the three of us had had a conversation. And already at the start of it, I knew I was going to ask them if they wanted to join me here for five sessions. And luckily enough, they said yes. So, welcome and join me, Inma and Matthew, as we talk about community in Perryman. So, join us. So, this is interesting because this is this is the first recording of the second season of the Tankispan pod sort of the meandering conversation series and the last season I have my fifth conversation with Allison to go and me Gary and Allison chaperoned by by um Caspia will also have a recording and it will those recordings will run all through that there will run all through October so this might then be the first recording. It will be out sometime in November. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're, you know, jumping the gun, but in a good way, I think. Yes. Yeah. We are. We have been having a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting. I, I'm just looking forward to jump into it. I was thinking if this you morning. Want, you want. Oh, you have. Yeah, no, please. Yeah, yeah. Go. You too. You, no, we. 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 <laughs> well, yeah, I was just. <laughs> I was just thinking about how we have. There's an, been an ongoing conversation or conversations between twos and, and the three of us. Like, you know, between. Um, pairs and the three of us within this group. And, um, and so often when the conversation it's, it's periodic or, you know, it's, inter it's, um, we talk and then we don't talk and we talk again. And sometimes we could pick up where we left off and sometimes <laughs> something comes in out of left field, but Inma is pointing to something that we've actually been, um, discussing in a text, uh, back and forth, yeah. uh, which is pretty interesting stuff. Yeah. So shoot. I know, I know a little bit because she gave a little heads up yesterday when me and Emma had a conversation. So, <laughs> um, yeah, shoot. Yeah, we, we have been for a long period of time <laughs> talking about community, about network system, about systemic, uh, yeah, systems and, and all that and the other day if i'm gonna jump in the nitty-bitty uh, of the last part of the conversation with but first can you either take off your uh the green thing because your microphone is scratchy oh. that, the that one yeah yeah so yeah. either take that off or you know do something oh yeah. That'll work. There you go. <laughs> it was actually meant to be there. <laughs> it was meant to be there. Well, now it's there. Perfect. Because otherwise there's that scratchy noise. Yeah. Okay. 
time off, okay. time, time on again, or whatever yeah. you thought. <laughs> Do you want to start that thought from the, from the top? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. So we, we have been for a long time, uh, talking about community networks, problem solvers was born to talk about that system, how system work, how network work. And, and of course we are part of the community. Is the, of, the three of us part of creative community. So community was, uh, is a big part of that conversation. And, uh, lately, uh, the last part of this, this, uh, conversation to get, to get, uh, interesting route because we are gonna um, <laughs> create something that is gonna kill Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> 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 just because it's it's really cool the way the way we are thinking it would work <laughs> what are you saying Matthew yeah it's it's um there's an interesting footnote about Twitter which maybe we'll get to but um uh because Twitter may actually choose that route itself there's 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 noise about that now but okay. one of the things to me that is interesting about this is, uh, uh, has to do with like hierarchical structure, um, or, um, or just structure so that, you know, Facebook is a top down organization. Mark Zuckerberg is extracting money by selling ads, monetizing the connections between people. So people connect. It's what people do. It's what we need to do. We're social creatures. And Mark Zuckerberg treats that as a resource that he can extract, just like Peabody did with coal. And so it's, and he's the one guy at top, he owns 51%. He makes, he's got, a, you know, executive decision on, on everything. And then everyone else is just essentially working for him by making connections on Facebook. And um, what if there were a bottom-up structure so that the people with the power and the agency were the ones who were actually making the connections. So what if we moved, stepped outside of this extraction model, which is generally speaking, what startups make a living on <laughs> because they're, because they're the startups are about getting venture capital to invest. And then you have somebody to pay back and it's all about who's the next billionaire. It's this, it's just this, it's not a really sustain, sustainable model for, you know, humanity in the position that it's in on the planet right now. Um, for a lot of different reasons, but, but certainly in terms of the social network aspect and not even just social networks, but networks of communities like meta networks and, um, professional networks, um, and, you know, all these different ways that people have the need to interact and can have opportunities to interact. And so what if there is a way, I mean, first of all, does it need to be monetized? That's one question, right? So there, so we could talk about it from a gift economy perspective where it's, it's not about transactional exchange as the source of, of the flow of, of, um, wealth, um, that it could be actually separated from that. But in the context of transactional exchanges, then if there is value being created in a network, why can't that value be distributed to those who are creating it, right? So, and there's, there's sort of nominal moves afoot in Medium and LinkedIn where they want to pay content creators for creating the content that makes them billionaires, <laughs> that makes their companies so, corporations so valuable. Um, but of course, it's still kind of a trickle down sort of a thing. And so the, the curiosity that I have is like how, you know, what would that look like? How would that be possible? Um, and, um, how do we get from where we are now to actually making that, uh, a reality? Yeah. The, the path that we traveled to get there was interesting because we were, we we're starting to talk about community, first of all, and we were thinking how what about no big massive communities making this uh, or this or this in a separate way 
like could be massive Facebook, massive Instagram, massive social <laughs> collectives. Uh, and as Matthew say, uh, someone at the top making, being really rich for those uh, structures. And, and we were thinking um, of, okay, what if the structure is a network of co small communities where each community is doing their thing uh, and, and in a, in a, in a structure uh, flat in some, somehow in the sense of there is no hierarchy and there are many of them and there is a network, a way of networking where it's if true. I'm in this, yeah, if I'm in this community and created community, I can jump to another community, um, let's say of food related and a, an interchange content, um, add back value to it and vice versa. And then we were, yeah, we were talking about that structure instead of individual, individual structure, uh, people up giving content to a massive structure, something like that. That was the beginning. Well, that was the starting point of this part of the conversation of, yeah, because all this is coming from really, really back, far back when we were talking about uh, the community of souls and, 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 and saying, okay, how, how can we connect with other communities? What communities are there? What would be the best approach to, not the best, but what, what approach can we take to connect with other communities? And which part of creative community is already in that possibility of launch out and say, Hey, we're here. We are doing this here. What are you doing there? What if we do something, maybe not together, but connect some way. That was the beginning, beginning, beginning of the, of the conversation months ago. The how to is still a question, of course, but we keep going exploring. Decentralization is a is a is a part of this, I think, and that's I, I hadn't read anything about Web 3.0 until last night. I'd hardly even heard the term much. Um, I've certainly heard Web 2.0 for a long time, but um, Web 3.0 is leaning into blockchain and decentralization, and where the content creators are, where institutions are the exception, not the rule, and individuals are the ones who are driving the culture on the web. Um, yeah. And this is where the blockchain comes into the picture with, with nifties and, um, and uh, all, all of that, because that technology uh, uh, opens the door to a lot of possibilities in that direction, let's just say. Um, uh, but the decentralization is also a part of, it's related to this question of hierarchy um, and to have a, a lateral or horizontal spread rather than a vertical one with, you know, the king on top and all the groundlings below. And it's also about diversity of culture so that um, you don't have this homogenous Facebook culture where everybody's just a jerk to everybody else and Mark Zuckerberg's selling ads or I don't, it's been so long since I've been on Facebook. I don't know, but that's what I remember. Um, you know, it's just like no civil discourse and, uh, and instead you have pockets of culture, like we've, there's a culture to creative community. And then there are these folks in the UK that are doing mapping exercises, following up on Guy Debord's uh, situationalist um, or letterists. Um, the, uh, this, this whole school of the people who go on day reeve, drifting through a landscape and exploring the psychogeography of a place and coming to know place in this way. And so it's a looser community that I'm only really exposed to through Instagram, but that, um, 
but there is a culture among these people. And that's different from the culture that we have in creative community, mm -hmm. uh, which is different from the culture that we find in a place like Akimbo. Um, but that, you know, but that, and that is, that is a, what I'm talking about in terms of diversity of culture. Yeah. But, but I would, having gone into Twitter again after a five, six year hiatus and be, and, and kind of shifting what Twitterverse I'm in, um, I would say that there are the different cultures. They mm -hmm. are there in Twitter. They are there on Facebook as well. Um, even though perhaps the, the, the foundational structure is more set perhaps than what I experienced, like in, in our creative community that is you know, was born in, in August of 2020, like, um, a discourse platform where there's a looser foundational structure because you can, you can play with it and, and we can play with it because we're not that many people and, and, you know, we can't really and and then we when we need to go outside of that, well then we draw in you know a Google Docs or a Zoom gala or it's like so we are using other other structures to support the culture, uh, in a sense. I I think that the difference I'm pointing to has to do with sovereignty. That if yeah. I'm if I'm if I'm connecting with you on Facebook, I'm on Mark Zuckerberg's land. He he owns that platform quite literally. And when I'm yeah. connecting with you in creative community, it's not that simple. It's not like that, right? And so, what if we have? There's creative community as a community is sovereign. That's our own sovereign space online. And what if there are other communities that can create a discourse platform or a, you know, a forum software through WordPress? Like there's all these different ways of doing it using open source software, which is another key component here. Yeah. Um, the, cause there's a culture that comes with that as well. And a culture that's implied. Mm -hmm. Um, and that, uh, so then if, if we have creative community and we're healthy and vibrant and vital and, you know, growing at our appropriate pace and, you know, evolving in our own ways, and then we're connected to, you know, I'm connected to the, like, let's say the clean language community over here that's using open source software for their annual gathering. And then I'm connected to, um, you know, the psychogeography folks much more loosely. It's a bad example. It's through Instagram, which is owned by Facebook, et cetera. But that maybe, maybe they move to having their own platform and establishing their own sovereign space online. And then if we have communities like this that are interconnected, what is that social fabric like? compared to everybody's hanging out on, you know, the new Maggie's farm, which is now Zuckerberg's farm, right? And so it's like this, it's the equivalent of a nation state in, in the virtual space almost, you know, um, and you got to abide by their rules. They can censor you. They don't have a constitution. They just own the place and, you know, all the, it's just not, it's far from ideal. And that's the monoculture that I'm pointing to is that, yeah, there are different Facebook groups. They're different, all of that, I know. But at the end of the day, we can't get away from the fact that Mark Zuckerberg owns that and his purpose is to extract value from your connections. And I don't, I, that's not in alignment with my own integrity. I, I can't support that and be in my own integrity. And so I seek places elsewhere where I can be in my, stand in my own integrity and have social connections and, you know, um, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that type of structure, the whole, the whole point of it was, or it is that type of a structure goal toward a type of relationship that breaks the global culture mm -hmm. in a way that if imagine if every group in Facebook, on Facebook, for example, 
were independent and were doing their thing independently with a, a software that is what they need and a software that don't cost money, it costs, it costs uh, use. If you use it, that, that is the way of generating more in that. That's how it works in, in open source. You use it, that, that's how, and you build it and, and it, it grows and that is the payment, right? So if that happens, we are talking about, yeah, we are talking about a nation or, 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 or a global a, a connections that are not cities, that are villages where everyone knows everyone and the culture could be their own, our own culture. It doesn't have to be what someone else wants. And that is a revolution. Well, for me, that's a revolution itself in the term of the global culture, not just internet. This is how we live. But because it, it, it kind of, for me, it like, it flashes to what the internet was. Uh -huh. right? Yeah. At the it beginning, it kind of started right, right. like that. It started right. as these right. blobs that could talk to each other because of, I don't know, HTTP, you know, is like, uh -huh. there's a protocol that means that if I send something, you will be able to receive it because it's a generally same language, right? Yeah. But how you do your thing here doesn't really matter uh -huh. to the people over here, but you can do it. And then it's kind of been, no, everybody needs to be this. And it's just kind of, you know, wrapped all of the internet into this. Okay, it needs to be in this form. Um, and, and that's also interesting because there's a lot of voices about that too. Uh, coming to this perhaps from a different angle than I think our angle is, uh, which is more the, the community, the, you know, it's like, we have these connections that we really like and, you know, what might sprout if it seeds. And I think there's a lot of people coming towards that aspect from, I don't know, probably some coming from a technical standpoint, just, you know, going, getting off on the technical potential in there. And there's probably a lot of people going at it from a more of a, legal standpoint or like moral, ethical, what's right, you know, that type of standpoint. So there's probably, I think a lot of people could, could come together to this thing, but from different, like, you know, my heart's in it for this reason and my heart's in it for that reason. And then kind of still come at the same thing. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Yeah. It, and and I agree that it's it's pointing back to where the internet started. I mean that that that, that it's 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 a yeah. hearkening back to an earlier culture online before basically before people figured out how to game it for big bucks. I mean that that there was a you know that that in the first 20 years of this century um that's when that shift really, you know, after the dot com bust um and and then there's this, you know, the people who survived that and PayPal's inching along and then you figure out all these, you know, all of the momentum towards how do we monetize this and, and, and make money in this new landscape gained momentum and then, you know, got to a fever pitch. And now we've got Facebook, we've got the big, you know, the big giants in that space, Google, Facebook, Amazon, et cetera. Um, and then, but now we're moving into a space not just online, but in terms of humanity, because of the massive amount of change that's we've hardly probably really even begun to see yet, um, but we can certainly get a sense of is that it, what is the role of institutions moving forward? 
um, versus the role of individuals. And if, and if, and if we're going to shift from, you know, if it's true, this web 3.0 perspective that institutions become the exception instead of the rule, um, then what is it, you know, how, how do we make that? That's a, <laughs> that's literally flipping the whole system. It's like a 180 degree shift. And so how do we make that transition? And this feels to me like what we're talking about is all about human connection, support, and um, nourishing connection and nourishing community and all of these um, things that humans need, even without massive change happening, but certainly in the context of massive change, they need it even more. And I'm reminded too by this conversation of, uh, of what is probably a long ago Buddhist by the roadside episode, because I haven't listened to it in a long time, because I haven't been listening to hardly any podcasts for the past year, but, um, but that there was a conversation about, um, I think it had to do with COVID response, but that's just as an example of what I'm talking about, that the principle is what's important to me is that, um, there was this, the, the comparison between a nation making decisions in response to a crisis versus cities you know, a smaller, you know, more granular entities within the nation making a response. And, and the point of it is that Stockholm has a different culture from Malmo, right? And Charlottesville's got a different culture from Birmingham, you know, in, I mean, Birmingham, either in the UK or Alabama, right? That, that so that there's, um, but, but, you know, Charlottesville and Birmingham, Alabama are the same country at least, but that, so, so what's a national response versus a, a, a lower municipal level response and who is able to do a better job to tailor a response to the needs and the culture of a locale, the municipal level government or the national level government, who's got scores of cities to deal with, right? Depending on the size of the country. And so this is a sip, this is looking at that same sort of dynamic and, you know, do we abide by the way, you know, Mark Zuckerberg responds to censorship? Is that, is that working for us in, within the Facebook nations? Like you tell me, um, or does it work better when there are 50 of us here or even 150 or 500, but that we have a, a smaller group, a, a community that has its own particular culture, its own way of governing itself and that it sorts out what it needs to sort out as it's appropriate to that culture. And we're moving back, not just to the earlier days of the internet, but the like millennia in terms of human development, civilization, right? And, and this notion that we can, we're really only biologically able to attune to about 150 people, at least in terms of like really knowing that many people, um, in terms of which, you know, I, I don't know the veracity of that, but it makes sense to me in terms of human development and the size of, of, of human groups, um, a long time ago. Um, but that we haven't moved past that biology necessarily. Um, but it's so interesting because I was, I took a walk and talk with a, with a new acquaintance the other day, and we were talking about local, national, and global, and how in my view, the nation state, the national view is getting more and more obsolete because what is, what impacts me is either in the local sphere or on a global sphere, uh -huh. you know, it's like climate or, or, you know, pollution or whatever. It's like, okay, yeah, that's, that's global, right? And local. Uh -huh. Right. What can we do here to make sure that the river is okay, or there is not a lot of plastic pollution on the beaches or whatever. And then on a global scale, because pollution travels through air and air doesn't, you know, recognize nation boundaries and, and stuff. So, and I'm reminded of anti-fragile, uh, where, uh, Nicholas, nothing Taylor gives the example of Switzerland over and over and over again, because they are a nation state that have kept the, the canton, the, the local municipal governmental agency seems to be way above 
what I see in Sweden, at least, and, and most other places, I think. Um, but so that's one of the things that I'm flashing on. And then the other thing I'm flashing on is this kind of going back to Ishmael um, by Daniel Quinn, how what, what I hear us talking about, what I've seen us doing in our creative community, what you speak about, about web, you know, web 3.0 and, and stuff, it's like, it has to come from a different worldview. Uh -huh. It has to come from a different position. If it comes from the same position, in no time we'll be there monetizing the hell out of that shit too. Right? It's like so somehow I you know, you know me by now. I'm I'm kind of I'm very attuned to that aspect of 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 humanity, I guess you could say at the moment. It's like that seems to be like the crux. It's like that's where it's at. Because if we if we come to this thing and we start to make communities and, you know, reaching out and stuff, and then before we know it, well, okay, that's Facebook version two. Uh because enough people starts from the same worldview, the same way of being in the world, of, of interacting with it, of thinking about themselves and others and stuff. That, um, so at least I think that needs to be part of what's addressed. It's like it needs to be voiced. That needs to be, you know, if there's the mycelium underneath, okay, we need the fruiting bodies to actually visibly, uh, okay, here's this thing, worldview. Oh, yeah, that's an important one. Yes. Yeah, I, I, two things. One, it, it looks like going back, but, I don't think uh, it will be going back. It looks like, yeah, we are, we are internet started like that, but with the technology we know now, it won't be going back. So how we figure it out now with what we know as tools, and that is the vision that I think from the beginning of times is that we use tools and then tools use us. We use words and then words use us. We use internet and the internet use us and they are tools. So the vision, the, the chief may be that. And hey, if it happens in a hundred years time or in 20 years time that someone else there is a head there that can make money and, and, and figure it out. Wait, we will do web 4.0. Uh -huh. It's how we evolve and how we not, not coming back to the beginning of internet, but where we are now and what we know now, let's, let's do the 3.0 with that vision of that's what we want. And obviously it will have, sure, human right like that. It will be someone says, oh, I can monetize this. And then we will be thinking, okay, the, I, don't, I don't know if there is a way to shift the mission. That doesn't come from what we know or, or that's it. it. It could tap to the unknown. And, and Matthew is in, in, in that position that, okay, we tap what? to the unknown. We tap to the unknown and, and then um, we'll see. And, and it's a good, I think it's a really, really interesting way to go. But as uh, the book, uh, 
the art of is, is okay, we know something and then we don't know something. And then we play with both to, to keep going, to, to do improvisation, to create. Just only and absolutely unknown how you, how you balance in that world is, I don't know. I think, I think what, what we know and tapping the unknown and, and looking for, for those, uh, all toward those outcomes of, of value, integrity, those values that are there than are humans also, not just the profit making, but somehow, at least at the beginning, is what, what will move this forward. And then, yeah, maybe someone come along and say, hey, I want to monetize this. What can we do? We're not going to kill him or her. <laughs> I, I think it's fair to assume that that will happen. And, and that, you know, this is where for a lot of this, for me, the, the lens of psychological development can be really useful in clarifying the dynamics that are in play. Um, and, you know, that's a whole other like, I, I, it's not just a lens that I can hand to you and you can, you gotta, you know, learn how to use the lens essentially, but that some aspects of it, it that are pertinent to this are that adult psychological development is not static. It continues, although there's typically a static period from about the age of 25 to 50. Um, but, um, meditation is one thing that changes that dynamic. If you meditate on a daily basis, you're going to continue to move uh, in your psychological development, even through that age range. Um, and crisis is the other thing. And so it's, it's in response to crisis, the people grow, the, the people development develop psychologically. Um, and as children, that happens just in the course of growing up, we, we face these we don't call them crises, but we, but we, we come up against a wall. We have to find a way around it. And it's, there's, that's just part and parcel of being a child is essentially a container that's ready made for it. But when we become adults, everyone has a more different experience. Depends on, you know, what your life path is, where you live, what culture you're in, all these things. But that when you lose a spouse in an auto accident, or when you get into an abusive relationship, or when you lose your job when you're 34 and you just had your second child, or that what it, crises like this force psychological development. And right now <laughs> in the world, crisis is essentially on the rise because, and even if we don't, I mean, change is going to bring obstacles. Change always brings obstacles to some extent. Um, you have to make choices. You have to do things different ways. And this is like, we don't, maybe don't call them crises, but it's bringing the same dynamic into play in terms of psychological development. So my point is that humanity across the board, as we move into more and more change through the climate shifting and all of the, whatever is happening politically throughout the planet and all of these things that, um, we're having, a, we're being given a crash course in psychological development and not everybody's going to end up on the same level, but everybody's going to jump a lot, going to have to move to a new level essentially. And so we're all growing up from wherever we're starting, we're growing up another notch. Um, I'm painting in really broad strokes, but, um, but even within that, this whole you know, how do we monetize this? That is native to a particular level of psychological development. And some people are there and some people are going to stay there. Some people have moved past that level and are talking about other ways to do the same things. Some people haven't gotten there yet and will get there soon. And so there, but that level is always going to be in play. And so there's always going to be somebody saying, how do we monetize this? And so I think that's just part of the terrain that the, the challenge I think now is what do those of us who have moved beyond that phase, that, that stage of development, um, what are we doing? What is the, cause, cause the people who are pioneering culture are at, are also pioneering psychological development. They're out, they're out at the, at the furthest reaches of where humanity has developed psychologically. Um, and so what, what people on that leading edge are doing is going to have an impact on 
everybody who is at lo lower levels. It's sort of a shame that this is described in terms of verticality, because it's not about, it's not saying one person is better than the other or smarter than the other. It's just, it's just, um, in the same way that a, a seven-year-old is not better than a three-year-old, right? It's, it's just that you're at a, it's just different. Um, but there is would, a, there yeah. is a progression to it. And what uh, you see, the amount of reality right. that you can see. That's right. Yeah. It is your, your ability to grasp complexity and nuance it increases as you develop psychologically. And so, mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And, and the, the number of different people that you can put yourself in their shoes at the same time increases yeah. so that you can yeah. have empathy, yeah. not just empathy. for one other person, but for a multiple. And so, um, so what are the people that are on the leading edge, you know, doing, and I think this is where conversations like this sort of conversation we're having start to emerge or have, I mean, have been emerging, mm -hmm. um, and that we know that there's always, there always will be a challenge from these other levels that are like, how can we make money off of this? And that has to just become something that we incorporate in our own design and our own thinking through, like, how are we doing this? Um, and the other, another angle on this for me is that to step away from the psychological development stuff is that going like the ability to navigate uncertainty is increasingly valuable. Like that's always been valuable, but in a, you know, I, I, you know, when I was born in the early 1970s in the United States, there was this sort of, everything's always been this way and it will always be this way kind of mindset because it was like, a, we didn't know we were at the tail end of industrialism yet. I mean, maybe the kids did, but like the, the, the grownups were just like, it's always been like this because my grandfather, you know, and <laughs> And that's of course not, was an inaccurate perspective, but, um, but that uncertainty is increasingly a part of life. And so to be able to be at peace with, and even be so bold as to seek out uncertainty, um, is a, is a, it's a, it's a, a practical tool to, or, or pack practical dynamic to have a relationship with. Um, and I think that that is somehow that informs what we're talking about here, because, um, and, and also with the, di the talking about diversity of culture with, you know, Stockholm and Malmo choosing their own responses to COVID versus the nation of Sweden, because then not only do they have different cultures, but they're going to try different approaches and they can learn from what works from each other. Right. So that's what, that's, that's how an ecosystem operates is that you yeah. have that kind of diversity and, and an exchange of information. And so if we can model our own way of being as humans in the world on the way that ecosystems operate, we're more likely to succeed, <laughs> you know, at, at, um, at, at sticking around on this planet, because that's a way that we know works. And if we keep trying to do it our way instead, then we're, it's, I don't like those odds. I don't know really why I'm flashing on this. Last night I was at, at a friend's house and, and another mutual friend of ours, Hulda Biana, she said something really, really wise. We were talking about kind of two opponents being in conversation and kind of, you know, both of them going away thinking, he's an idiot, she's an idiot. You know, it's like, it, it was like, is that a, a, a deficit in, in, you know, not not knowing yourself, of not seeing yourself enough, of, you know, not being aware. And Hulda Biona said, well, I'm not sure it's about that. She said, I think it might be about what's the size of your reality window? What's the size of the window that you view your reality through? Is it a really, really tiny window? You can be really self-aware within that, but, you know, then there's a lot outside of your window. Do you have a big one? You know, you will likely be, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, less prone to say you're an idiot or she's an idiot because it's like they fit within my window of the reality, right? But if it's really, really little, oh man, I'm going to see idiots all over the place because they're not, they don't fit into what I see as 
this is how you do it. This is how you're, this is what you say, and this is what you think, and this is how you do, you know? Um, and I just, I thought that was a really, really good way of, of putting it. And, and it's like you say, this, this level of the unknown, it's like, if you have a big window, I'm guessing there will be a lot of things within that window that you don't know. And you're kind of fine with that. But if you have a really little one, I'm guessing that you know most of the things within that. And then if something comes that's unknown, that might be very, very scary because you're not used to dancing with the unknown, right? Because you know this is how you're supposed to do and say and be. Um. Well, that brings to mind the, the dimensional perspective of, or the example of flatland, um, that if you, if you live in a two dimensional world where there is no third dimension, if, if you are, a, if you live in a square house and you are a circle and your neighbor is a triangle, um, then how do you make sense of a sphere? What does a sphere look like when it passes through your reality, which has no third dimension? And the answer is it, it looks like a sphere looks like in the second dimension, but a sphere is a third dimensional object. So what does that mean? It means that it shows up, it means it's that, clear. yeah, there, you're on a plane, a flat surface, <laughs> and it's a ball that moves through that. So when it hits it, it's a point. It's it becomes point, yeah. a, then it becomes a circle that enlarges until it comes to the equator, and then that circle starts to diminish and is a point and it disappears. What is that? That's like seeing a UFO, yeah. the equivalent, or a ghost, or whatever. And so, but if you live in the second dimension, you don't even know the third dimension exists. So that's not, you don't even have a vocabulary of imagination to account for this bizarre thing that happened. This point appeared in my living room, became a circle, and then it got larger and it shrank and it disappeared. How do you make sense of that? And I think we're dealing with that. I mean, I think that's also, for me, that's how I've made sense of very, you know, encountering people in different levels of psychological development, because I start to realize, oh, I'm a sphere and you're a circle and you think you understand me. And to a certain extent you do because spheres and circles are similar <laughs> and entirely different. And if you are in the second dimension and you perceive a third dimensional object, you don't know, you really don't know what it is. You can only know what it is from your perspective. And so then how do you communicate between those two realms, right? And that's a whole other set of challenges, but there are ways of doing it. You learn to speak each other's language, which if you're a sphere, you learn to communicate to people in the second dimension in a way that they can understand. And that's harder for them to do for you, of course, but. Yeah, I, th I think if we translate that to, to they were in different communities and how they do things differently. You may not know and, and not feel comfortable with what another community is, is making out of it. And if I have a picture of it in my head, it will be the people who jump from community to community, which will be the links, it will be the relationship ones. So those are the ones that are moving from the known to the unknown and, and playing around and are the ones that are linking each other community. And making, making that like a, something that is not isolated, that not how, how to make up that, how to, to reach out and, and because what we have seen in other communities is because they have their own culture and we have our own culture, it's kind of difficult to, yeah, yes, jumping from, for, for something concrete is easy. I mean, jumping and say, hey, hello, I'm here and come back. That's easy. That is well, what I've seen. It's not difficult. You send a letter to Estocolm <laughs> and you don't get an answer. But uh, 
No, it wasn't in Stockholm. It was Malmö. It wasn't it. It was in the other. No, Stockholm. Yeah. Outside of Stockholm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, to to jump and say hello, that I don't think that is difficult. I think we can do that. I think we are able to do that within our community, and I think many communities are able to do that now to create the network of community. That's another story. Why is it another story? Because every culture will have to, in some ways, op be open to interrelate with different culture. Well, yes and or no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded now of how reading, what's the name of the book, a Merlin Sheldrake, Entangled World? No? Entangled yeah. Life, maybe? Entangled yeah. Life. Yeah, I yeah. always say world and it always is life. So Entangled Life, where he, he is kind of to my flat line, what did you call it? Flatland. Flatland, you know, here I am two dimensional and he's bringing in this third dimensional object into my, and I'm just <laughs> mind blown, just thinking about the interconnectedness that exists where we would not be alive at all, any of us, if, if that wasn't there. And he's like, I don't see fungi on me. I don't, you know, it's like, I can't, I don't know it. If I don't know it, I really don't know it. I have no idea it's there. Right. And I'm thinking of the, the, the loader trees in the forests because they exist. There are the loner trees, the one that maybe, you know, they get a little bit of whatever the thingy is that they need but they really don't send anything out because they're just not into that stuff, right? And then there's the node trees that are just, oh, you know, it's like they are the ones that are communicating, that are going, you know, it's like, and they're receiving and sending and everything. It's like, it's fine that there are those loner trees. And I'm guessing that would be the same in a in a network of communities there would be the loner communities too you know yeah maybe they send a ping out you know once every five years but that's sufficient for them they don't need any more than that right whereas there will be other communities that are really you know like junction points like this is where there's, you know, a lot going in, a lot going out, and, and there's a busy, busy, busy. Uh, and yeah, everything think, in yeah. between. And everything in between. Yeah, I think we are a little bit of a millennium behind mushrooms. <laughs> I don't think millennia is sufficient. It's like, whoa, we are so well, many. Yes, yes, you Billions are you spot on. Now translate yeah. that to human and we yeah. need to learn a lot. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. From, from that, at the same from time, nature. I, I also think that we actually, we know this thing, but we're not conscious of it. It's like, it's there. I mean, I don't, I didn't, I didn't know when I was a kid that I had to be born and have some of my mom's poop in order for the proper bacteria to, you know, to, to settle in and colonize my intestinal system. Nature knows that. I don't have to know that. It's done. Right? Right. So it's like... I, I think what's, what's lagging is kind of our cognitive ability, this ability that we have, that's the thing that's, that's trying to sort of catch up on this thing. How can we, how can we categorize this? How can we put words to it? And how could we understand it and stuff? Because it's happening. 
I don't have to understand gravity for gravity to work. It's there, always and already, right? Kind of the same with Matthew. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, so yeah, so to me, the cognitive is a, is a handicap. To me, the cognitive is an obstacle. That that we we yeah. the, the Western world has put the head, the mind, the brain, cognition on a pedestal. What is that pedestal? It's the body, right? The statue, the important thing of the important person, rests on the inert matter of the base, the pedestal, right? The human head on the human body is that in the Western world. And it's not sustainable if we go about things that way, because that same intelligence that is in that fungus is the same yeah. intelligence that is in the human body. It's that intelligence you're pointing to, Elena, with how do we get born? We don't have a manual for that. I mean, sure, there is a manual for that now because somebody thought it was important to cognitize that or whatever, right? But, um, and there's a place for that, right? I'm not, I'm not saying... This is not about being a Good. Luddite, going back Good. to caveman status. It would status. be really boring to have a Zoom call if we hadn't, <laughs> we, if we didn't do the cognitive thing, kind of helps, you know? Sure. Right. But there's Sorry. also, there's also a, a cycle, like the, the, this was in the conversation earlier with this question of going back or hearkening back, whether it's to the internet or tribal humanity or whatever, that, that like we, where we are, can look back at that, but when, but we can... But when we approach that from where we are, it doesn't have to be us moving backwards to it, no, right? No, we can continue because totally to me, it's cyclical where it's like octaves in music, right? That you go from C to C. If you're going into the bass, then you're going back or down. But you can go from middle C to a higher C. You're not regressing, right? You're, you're going up the scale. And so it's, mm -hmm. I think there's a, you know, so the piano keyboard is like a cycle that's laid, laid out in a linear fashion. And so it, anyway, so... Um, but in terms of, you know, we each have uh, <laughs> what I've learned through my relation, developing a relationship with my nervous system, which I've done in the context of healing from developmental trauma and not only developmental trauma, but that um, it has been part, a, a central part of that has been developing this practice of being aware of interoception, which is just the technical term for internal sensation. Um, but in fewer syllables, it's a bigger word, but it's actually more efficient to just say interoception. Um, and that interoception is just, if you tune into what's happening inside your body on the level of sensation, what are you feeling? That's interoception. And you're, that's always happening, but your cognitive mind is usually, we're not, tr we're trained to more or less ignore that, or we don't even have to be trained to ignore that. We just get distracted by culture and society. But if you're able, when you develop a practice of knowing what's happening internally on the level of sensation, you have access to the same information that your nervous system has access to, which is the information it relies on to make decisions. Now you're still operating, there's still a lag because your nervous system makes decisions faster than you can track that happening because that's how we survive. Because if we had to think it through, you know, we'd be yeah, lunch, we'd be right? <laughs> right, we never wouldn't have got here. And so so that but there's an in, in, innate intelligence to the body. And if we can let go of all of our religious training about how the body is bad and all of our cultural training about how cognition is better and all those things, then we actually have access to life, right? It's like the it's the intelligence of life. And so on a certain level, that is a common feature that we have with the intelligence of fungus. Now they've got a very different way of doing things. They've been at it a lot longer than we have. We stand to learn from them, et cetera. We are infants. We're not even infants compared to them, right? And right. yet the awareness that is present within the hyphae of fungus that is moving through the forest floor is the same awareness that we're each using now to observe one another in this conversation. Mm -hmm. That's not a trivial fact. To me, that's no. central. Right. And so, but we, I don't, I don't feel like that's, I don't know when I've heard that as a part of a conversation, like a few times maybe, but that, um, and it's that because there, we, we separate ourselves out as humans. We're better than nature. Like we have tools, you know, well, some birds have tools, folks, like just like, we're not actually that special. And what have our tools gotten us right to the brink of climate disaster? So, um, what if we identify with the biosphere as a part of this unity 
instead of that's here because God put it here for me to, you know, dig it out of the ground or whatever these antiquated, now hopefully increasingly antiquated perspectives are. Um, but that, that awareness of that, it's that awareness of, it's that awareness that is the intelligence of life present in an individual organism that is what is, that's the connecting factor. Like it's this, it's not a different life from the life of, um, of fungus. It's a, it's, it's arising at a different entity, but even that is sort of questionable. Like what is the separate, how can you, you can't, you yeah. know, what is a human on Mars? lost, right? There's no, there's no context for a human on Mars that involves life, really. I mean, mm -hmm. we, there's a lot of work to do before that could be, that could mm -hmm. be achieved. Yeah. Yeah. I really like identifying with the biosphere, just that a phrase. That's a really good way to, to, well, part, to put it. Sorry. Yeah, that just to tack that onto it. that, like one, one, one for me, that's there's psychological development, but there's also this like spiritual development for lack of a better term or consciousness development, which is sort of a misnomer because it's, you know, actually developing consciousness. It's, it's there. It's this unconditioned ground. Um, but that as one, let's say, progresses with a spiritual practice, with meditation practice, let's say, then identity shifts and it ex identity expands. And so there's this notion that you, that you move past the ego, ego death and all of that. And yet what's, what's happening is that who you identify or what you identify as increases. And so the ego is actually getting larger. And that, and that, and so, so that I can identify with all of humanity if I keep going. And that, yes, I'm still here in my own little meat suit, but that, but that my identity is actually a larger identity than that. And that that's can be actually experiential and that the awareness that comes through is aware of containing Matthew as opposed to being centered behind Matthew's eyes or something like that. Yeah. And that, that, those two parts connect very well with probably web 5.0 or 6.0, which will be no web. It will be us connecting to each other. And probably they will get to a way to monetize that too. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, we were talking about if, if what is this is just like a playground to get there. The internet is trading wheels for telepathy. Yeah. Which is a good thing, right? And, and it's like, that's the, the, I, I, I'm glad you bring that in because that's the thing that is still easy for me to, to forget. It's like, when you speak about this, you know, we have Facebook or Instagram, et cetera, and how, what if we could make these little communities and then somehow they would be conversing with each other in open systems and, you know, and all of that. It can be really easy for me to just jump up and find a gazillion reasons why that won't happen because there's already 2 billion people on Facebook and it will never have and this and that and the other thing. And I don't have to go there. Yeah. Cause we don't have to solve it, That's right. solve it as if it's something to be solved. You know, it's like, yeah, we don't have to bring in the solution. It's like, we can just play. We can just play inside of the community that we're in, reaching out to other communities that we find and seeing what happens. Yeah. You know, it's like nobody has to design the non-Facebook, right? It's like we, we don't. And, and it's, it's, it's interesting that I, I notice myself, I fall into this now and again. And at the same time, this is one of the things that I 
think it's it's so sad to see when a politician comes up with this wonderful vision, plan, idea, thing. What if? And are shut down, you know, by these questions. How would you do that? And how would you fund that? And where would the, you know, people come? And how would they know? Yada, 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 yada. And they go, I have no clue. And it's like, then we can't do that because you don't have the plan. It's like, no. Oh, it's like, no, we need more of that because there's like, We've had, and I think this also probably goes cyclically. There's eras when there's much more visionaries and then we're kind of in this, now it needs to be the project plan needs to be in place for anything to take place. And then we kind of go into the more visionary and, you know, and I feel we are in a very non-visionary time in many ways. If I look at politicians, I don't see you know, it's like four years, maybe. And it's like, that's not really visionary. You don't really come that far in four years. What about 400 years or 4,000 or 4 million years? Bring me a vision for 4 million years ahead. Now we're talking, right? Well, it, yeah. it makes me think like, where is the new growth? You know, that like, if we think about a metaphor of a plant, like, um, um, it, it, it's probably not the best example, but irises come to mind. So if you've ever, but at least a lot of people know irises probably, that if you've ever grown irises or if you've ever even better seen irises that have been growing for a long time untended, you can plant one rhizome and it's, you know, it's got a, a front and a back, it's, you know, grows on one end, sends up the leaves and, but then it, at that growing end, it forks. And since that new growth in two days, so then the next year you have two things coming up and then you have more each time. Over time, if you leave an iris alone for 10, 15 years, you come back to it and what you get is a circle. And from that original point, it, it is just fanned out and fairy rings, like the mushroom rings are the same dynamic, right? So it starts at this one point and it, it spreads out through growth. But what happens along the way? the new growth is always that leading edge, right? That's, that's moving out away from the original source or low source location. And what happens to the old rhizomes? Eventually they, they die, they get, they fall off, they turn to soil, right? And so if we're moving from institutions to individuals, um, then we're, what part of the, you know, Politicians are individuals, but they're the heads of institutions, right? And so, so we would expect to see things not working, not like less function. We'd expect to see decreasing functionality in that space if this is the move that's happening. And so I think of, but that doesn't mean there aren't visionaries. I mean, just listen to us. <laughs> right. So <laughs> right. And of course, you know, I know like visionary and crazy are often, you know, it's can be a fine line. Yeah, but yeah. but that's but that's the point of a visionary is to is to is to be able to surf that and to be able to do it without hurting people, essentially. Like, you know, that um that's the sort of the the the, the negative potential is that, you know, the the crazy people that are like, I have the answer and I'm gonna impose it on all of you. And but instead, like we're not we're not we're not doing that. We're exploring what's possible and we're talking about not imposing things on people, but rather what is yeah. possible and what can, what can arise through us. Um, Definitely. How do you I, impose the liberty in people? Right. <laughs> <laughs> we are playing, we are playing totally, totally playing yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that reminds me this, this, I don't, sorry, I don't remember his name, but this guy in New Zealand uh, with the land, uh, I think it was 50 acres or something like that, big land, and, and that was totally left because the growth was killing all the local plants. And, and, and this guy got everything he, he had, sold it, bought this land, and in 15 years, which is nothing, he got it, he got it back. And it, the wonderful part of it is he did nothing. He did nothing. He just 
let nature. So when we talk about this thing, how, 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 I, I, I see a big part of this is do less <laughs> and be and, yeah. and listen and, 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 and it's make yourself out of, not out, but on the side of the system, not in the middle. I'm talking about Alan Watts, not being the, don't be in the middle. Another thing that I wanted to say about what you said, Matthew, we are, if we are going from nations to individuals, well, I would say we are going from nations to community. Yes. I'm, I'm <laughs> taking that. Yeah. I'm taking that language know, from the I web 3.0. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I yeah, know. Yeah. And I, I know you're, what you're saying is that, yeah. but, uh, there is a carefulness of, of individualism that brought us here. Yeah. So. Yeah, I am not a fan of like rugged individualism or this, like certainly in, in the U.S., that's like a big part of the cultural history is this like, I, you know, I'm a self-made man, you know, like says George W. Bush, whose father gave yeah. him a baseball team um, to, to as a hobby or something. I don't know. But, um, but that this, but that that's this point of pride in the U.S. culture is that like I did it by myself. It's like, yeah, well, uh, who fed you when you were three years old? Like, and, and who educated you? And so, yeah. I think, no, I'm, I'm, that's a good point, to, a distinction to make that I, I, you know, I'm definitely not pointing to, um, a, a world of individuals, but rather to go from a top down hierarchy to a bottom up structure where, where the, the people with agency and sovereignty are, are, are the individuals, but that those individuals are parts of communities and that the organization in a broader sense is revolving around these networks and meta networks of communities in this, in this in, in embedded scales and like fractal, um, dynamics in terms of the, the way that, that, you know, individuals are connected in networks and then communities are connected in networks as well. Yeah. I think that the do less thing is probably one of the toughest to digest pieces of tankispian you can give people. Yeah. It's like, do less. What? No, we have to do more. We have to do more. We have to fix it. We have to fix everything. It's like, well, yeah, that's kind of the worldview that got us where we are today. It's like, so the do less thing is, is interesting. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, that's been slowly creeping its way into uh culture i mean i remember when the slow food movement started you know it's like which again is this way of of looking back without regressing right uh -huh. it's like uh -huh. okay up an octave here food yeah it can take time yeah it's real food it needs time and love and energy you know it's like care um and and slow food is turned into other slow movements. So there is a lot of slow movements, which I think at its core, kind of at least partly have this do less um, vibe to it, right? Like, leave it be, you know? I've been, I, I, I put sourdough bread in the oven today that I brought out the start. I had the culture in my refrigerator and I've not tended to it that well for the past month. So it was like, oh, I'm not very happy. So I took two days to kind of make it happy. And I, you know, I gently fed it with more flour and more water and just, okay. It's like, okay, I'm getting there and getting there. And then making the dough. And then letting that stand for 24 hours and then making the, you know, putting it in a, in a pan and to like patties, you can say, and then letting them stand for 24 hours until this morning, then popping them in the oven. It's like, I didn't need bread or I didn't want bread. Whenever I started this Friday, Saturday, something like that. Right. It's like, 
yeah, it's going to take me three or four days until I have my homemade bread. You know? Yeah. Quite fascinating. I don't have to do uh, baking soda or, or baking powder or or yeast, you know, it's like to kickstart it, to get it done now. One of the things that I'd see in that dynamic is uh, um, like, what is the, what is behind the impulse to do something? If, if it's about doing less or doing more um, and what I, what, what it's, what it seems to me that I see, certainly what I find in myself, which is, you know, the, the most reliable source for me is um, that it's coming out of something like fear or a lack of trust, um, which maybe is a spectrum, uh, you know, between fear and lack of trust, but there, there's overlap there at least. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. if instead I'm able to trust like the intelligence of the system or the intelligence of the, the, the culture in the sourdough starter or, you know, that if I can, or, or the, or the child to learn its own lessons that I don't need to hover over it in order for that to happen. Um, it, there's some peop this people point to this, um, you know, if, if, uh, when a, when a, when a bird, a baby bird is not, is still in the egg, right. Um, that it's got to find its own way out of that egg. And if you, that's, that is a crucial developmental event at the outset of the life of that individual organism. And if I come in and help it because I think that it, because I don't trust that it has the ability to do that for itself, I am handicapping that bird because I'm taking away the experience that it needs to, it, there's a, I mean, there's so many different examples of that in the world, but that, that we need that. It's like even talking about psychological development earlier, like we need that challenge to learn and grow. And if that's taken away from us, it's like in infantilization. Um, and so, so don't just do something, stand there, right? Like that, like that's like to learn, to be able to take that stance it is to, in order to do that and follow through, I have to be able to trust that like, this is going to work out. I, I don't need to micromanage the universe that I can, you know, we learn to do that in different ways and different scales and different departments of our own lives and, and that of our communities. But it's, it's important, I think, to see what's behind the impulse. Yeah. I, I, you just, I think you just described pretty well what we feel when we go to Facebook uh. and why we are part of that. Why, why Facebook has that? Because our first input is I don't trust myself and the technology I can learn and use and be, I have agency to use it. I trust him because it works. It works that way. So I fix my fear or lack of trust going to a place where I don't have agency at all or hardly nothing. And I play there and playing there, I am in that culture and I eat that culture and I grow in that culture and eventually I cannot get out of that culture. Yeah. It's kind of a stunted, stunted growth somehow. It's like the binding of feet in China. It's like, you know, yeah, they will grow, but into something mm. else right, than what they were intended to be. Uh -huh. And is it, because it, it reminds me of this, you know, you need to learn how to crawl before you can walk, which is somehow forgotten in, in many ways where kids, you know, babies are put in these, I don't know what you call them in, in English, these cuts where, with wheels on them so that they can, you know, very quickly transverse a room which has them so fucking frustrated if they're on the floor that parents just can't stand it. So instead of the kids actually learning how to crawl, which is a really, really important developmental state because it has that, it crosses the, the, the. Corpus callosum. 
midline. Yeah, the, yeah, the midline of the body in, in such a way that it really, really just it's massive growth in the brain. Yeah. If you don't learn how to crawl, you will have a hard time learning how to to use a pair of scissors. You will have a hard time learning how to do a cartwheel. You know, it's like all of those things because hey, here's this thing, right? You know, my kid can can move about. Yeah, but he's actually learning how to walk before he can crawl, and he's not supposed to. Right? There is a reason for that. So. Yeah, that that there, truly is horrible. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. make a judgment there, but. <laughs> Very <laughs> clear. I just, yes. well, I yeah. just saw. I never like, had what? one of those. I never yeah. had one of those. I was kind no. of somehow I knew from the beginning that that's not a really good thing. Um, you know. Yeah, the same. How we know it's our body who knows. It. Yeah. Come back to that. Yeah. And the same how we know what food is good for us. And the same how we know how to make that food edible, I cook it, but it's easier or we are in the culture that we also give that agency out. The yes. supermarket, cook the food for me. I just have to micro microwave yeah. it. Yeah. So it's all, it's all that linked. Yeah. Yeah. It's very linked. It's very, well, it, very it, linked. Industrialization took a lot of that away from us, took, took our, our, our more localized cultures away from us because, you know, Inma, you and I have talked about how one way of looking at culture is as what happens at the intersection of people and place, right? Because where you are determines what you can eat, what you can grow. And the weather where you are determines the cycle of the year for you, the sort of apparel you need, the shelter that you need. These are all, we, we see these as expressions of culture, like the architecture of Southern Spain versus the architecture of Northern Sweden, right? Like it's, it's place is determining that. And it's the, it's, it's, it's the people that are expressing it. Right. And so, but when all of the, the country's food in the U S is grown in the Midwest and. And if I'm going to eat food in Virginia, I go to the grocery store or a roast restaurant and I don't have a garden in my backyard and we don't have a cow or chickens, et cetera. When my mother was growing up just one generation away, there was a cow and an acre of garden and chickens. And yeah, there was a grocery store where you'd get like, you know, baking soda and soap and like, you know, some things that you work, but even Salt soap, like sugar. it's not that hard to make so salt and sugar spices right and so that sort of stuff but yeah it used to be a much much shorter list and now we have like you know just add water and now you've got a cake you know it's it, it, it but so this it's industrialization that's brought us that and what we're we're coming out of we've like living with an industrial hangover now i feel like you know and that making this transition into the digital space is there are a lot of opportunities for how do we shift out of um the industrial age, but can we do that in such a way where we don't, we don't reject technology, but we can actually, can we use technology to reconnect to the soil, to, to reconnect to what human culture is originally, which is the relationship to the earth in the place where we are. And I know there are other aspects of culture too, but it seems, this seems significant here. Um, and then when we're talking about you know, individual communities connecting to other communities, you know, um, versus, you know, like signing on with the Virginia company to go colonize the new world, which is maybe, maybe a metaphor for getting onto Facebook. Cause you know, what is Facebook, but the Virginia land company for, you know, the Virginia company where the dust eats, dust eats it East Dutch East India company or whichever one it is, these corporate entities that went out to, to do the colonizing and they took the indentured servants with them and they, they acquired slaves and did all the things that the, the sovereignty is all, it's all this very bottom, you know, top down structure. Um, so can, I think that's, I'm just getting a sense of that as how, what, what we're talking about navigating somewhat in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because it also connects this local global aspect. You know, all of us know that, you know, allergies and asthma and, and, you know, all of that stuff, it's on the rise in the Western world. It has been for decades by now. 
And something as simple as local honey can yeah. really help people who have pollen allergies. It needs to be local because it needs to be the pollen that is here where I live because then that honey will contain a little tiny amount of the pollen that's around and my system will say, okay, I know this stuff. I don't need to overreact, right? But where do you, you know, I can buy honey today from the fucking globe, wherever on it, you know, right. that yeah. does not help me. No. So something that is, you know, kind of inherently designed to just work. It's that intelligence, right? It, that's just there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And we're just fucking with it. And people don't even know that locally produced honey could possibly alleviate their, owl, their pollen allergies. It makes me think about listening in conversation and like that, that is a, this maybe sounds like a non sequitur, but that, but that what you're talking about with the honey, um, is it's pointing to that as an expression of this innate intelligence. And what we talked about earlier with identifying with the, with the biosphere, um, then but we're also a part of the biosphere and we can be in relationship with what we're a part of. And so rather than dictating what should happen, I heard Manuka honey is really good and that comes from New Zealand. So I'm going to get some of that. Right. So there's this like, mm, wait a minute, slow down. What, it, like, if I, if I had, what did my body want? Well, how do I find out? Well, I have to be in relationship with my body. How, how do you get it? How you did, how do you develop a relationship with someone? Do you impose yourself upon them or do you listen to them to find out who they are? Right. So, so if I listen to find out what my, how is my body responding? And then I can extend that out into the space around me, into the ecosystem around me. Mm, what happens if I consume something local instead of something that, you know, even with vegetables and thinking of the enzymes that are on vegetables that, uh, you know, that allow the fermentation process to begin, if we're going to engage in that sort of a thing and that, but so that. Because the whole industrial thing is like imposition of human will on the landscape, on, on the earth. And so what if we flip that? And I think that's what we're being asked to do is like, in order to navigate this aspect in terms of like using local produce and, and um, being, can, so that what I ingest is I'm, I'm actually literally a part of the local e ecosystem because what I'm ingesting is local. Right. And so that, that I'm actually localizing myself as I'm, I'm, I'm grounding myself in that ecosystem, as opposed to like, mm, the view here is nice, but I'd rather have some Manuka honey from New Zealand because that's medicinal. Right. And so, um, so, but the, I don't know, listening comes up to me as, as a, at least the yeah. attitude of listening, maybe not literally, but this attitude of like yeah. receiving and from opening to and receiving information instead of being like father knows best or, or whatever the trope is. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, yeah, totally. That reminds me how, how we have talked about place and the importance of place to, for this structure of community to really get roots. No context, no way that, that, so yeah, I, Agency and 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 all the all the principles that New World has from what we have been talking about, it seems like place is really really important. Even if place means just being aware of where you are in order to relate with you guys, one in Sweden, the other one in, and be able to. Be respectful with that and, and listen to that. You say, okay, we were talking the last throwing storm about weather, and my first reaction when we started was how typical to start a conversation with weather. Remember? Mm -hmm. And 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 then we from there we went to to place. From yeah. there we went to place and how weather connect places and and how we the three of us are connected because of weather. Yeah. Yeah, we are connected, but I don't forget where I am. I can't because if I, if I 
tell you, if you ask me, what did you eat yesterday? Probably I will tell you something that is from here and, and you may not get there. And that is okay too. Is, is this, this globalization, yet yeah, local and global, is global because the air we breathe is global. But we have roots. We tend to forget that part. Which is again related with body. <laughs> so we tend to forget the body. We are more here and here is more the air part of us, maybe. And then it's... Well, and it makes me think too about because there's this inherent kind of disparity or paradox with, with, with that, that, you know, cause here we are in community, you know, like the three of us know each other from, from within a particular community. And yet well, here we are in three different land masses, right. Um, right. and time zones and, and, and so, but again, like talking about, you know, na nation level response to crisis versus city level approach to response to crisis that the way that each location is going to have a different kind of response and will therefore be trying different things. It's much more efficient on a global scale for everybody to be running different experiments and learning from one another than everybody to be running the same experiment. Right. And then finding yeah. out whether or not that works, that's putting, that is putting all your bags in one basket, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that's the pharmaceutical model, <laughs> let's just say. <laughs> and, um, whereas there could be in, in, you know, so many more, uh, approaches. And so what I'm learning from each of you is through, um, we have, we have the opportunity to learn from one another is, um, to, to appreciate each other's culture and not impose culture on one another, but open to receive and listen and learn from one another in terms of like, well, you know, helena has got the perspective she has in part because of where she lives and where she grew up and the relationship with that place and the culture that has arisen in that place. And likewise, Inma and likewise, Matthew, and that, um, there's, this is the diversity of culture piece that is so innate within an ecosystem, right? That, you know, that the, um, this is how an ecosystem sur survives because it doesn't put all its eggs in one basket. Like it, it's, it's, it builds, it reaches into that diversity and that is, it's, it's a, it's, protection is not the right word, but there's a sort of insurance in that. Um, mm And it's like, that's also part of what makes my reality window grow, right? It's like, yeah, it grows because Inma is born in Spain and now lives in Scotland. And I am a close friend of Inma and we talk and we write and we, you know, it's like, and we think about each other. I am growing my window because I know you, Matthew, because of what you bring whenever we interact, whether it be like this or chatting or thinking about each other, right? It's like, it's, it's, or I see one of your images floating by on, on Instagram. And, and I was like, there is that, which, which also for me, there is the aspect of listening to it because I have in the past year gotten much, much more um, conscious about that. I've, I've, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing with that. That's the great word for it. I am playing with that. I'm playing with what do I feel in my body when, when I see an, you know, a Matthew picture floating by on Instagram. I, there's recognition. I know it's you, yeah. right? Which opens up something in me. And, and, you know, I can kind of feel where in my body do I feel that? Where do I sense that? So I'm listening a lot. Full body listening. I have done a lot of head listening. 
right? But I'm I'm really getting into full body listening, uh, which is you know it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah we've talked. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Go, go. I just well, said yes. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so. You know, we've talked about perspective before and, and we've engaged in, you know, perspectival exercises even, or, or games or however you want to call it, like playing with systemic modeling. Um, and, and so, cause Helena, what you're talking about to me speaks to, is, is, is about perspective is that, um, cause each of us has the perspective we have because of the experience we've had in the cultures we've had in the places we've had, and that not everyone really is conscious of having a perspective, right? In the same way that if I grew up in a family with an alcoholic father who beat the kids every night, then to me, that's just the way things are in the world. That I assume that's true for everyone else. But of course that's not true. But, and so there's, and, and it's, we don't, we don't expect much more from a child. Like, like how would a child know any better? That's the only thing they've known. But then you go out into the world and you find, oh, different people grew up in different kinds of families. Um, and then you find out, oh, there are other cultures beyond the culture of my country and the, et cetera. And so, but this is all about perspective. As you begin to recognize that people have had different experiences, that implies perspective. And then as you become more conscious and proactive with that, um, like my intention has been to, to um, learn, you know, you can learn about something from looking at it from the outside in, right? Like peering in at like, oh, this is how they do things in Sweden. You know, but it would be different if I, you know, lived in Malmo for a year. Like I would have a different understanding of the Swedish perspective because I would have placed myself within it. Right. And so you could do that with religion. You can do that with culture. You can do that with all these different things. But that if you become conscious of perspective and become proactive to increase your perspective by learning what other perspectives are, like I think of it as a library, like I've been seeking to create a library of perspectives so that I can look at the world through these different perspectives, angles, uh, viewpoints, um, you know, worldview it, it implies perspective, right? That, you know, that it's like, I see the world in a certain way because of my perspective, like that there, you can't really pull those two apart. And so, um, I think that's, that's the sort of the, as talking about a paradox in terms of, you know, here we are in different places and yet we're part of a community. What does that mean? Well, that's what the virtual space allows us to begin doing. And if we look at that in terms of perspective, then we can pretty quickly see like how beneficial that is. And then again, with psychological development, this is also a part of that because that's also speaking to worldviews. And if you can understand other people's worldviews, you're going to be expanding your own. And you don't have to adopt their ways of doing things, but you can, again, like you can have a library and not read all those books all the time, but have access to them. And I think it is also in, inherently a way of increasing empathy. It's a way of exploring empathy, right? That that's, you know, because if you it learn other people have... That right window of your reality like put yourself in someone else's shoes then you know yeah. what it's like to be in that person's shoes you don't have to live in them but it changes the way you interact with them and then other people and the more you just keep expanding into that i think it's, it, the... yeah the way the way i see the the paradox if is, is imagine if talking about honey we have three jars of honey Wealth, everyone with local honey, and we try to communicate how our honey is to each other, right? And and if we have words or metaphors, or or that there's things between us that are common commonalities, we can reach there with metaphor to explain how my honey is, and you explain how your honey is, and you explain. I don't have to try the honey of Virginia anymore. I know how. It is. Right? And that, yeah, I mean, that kind of draws us full circle here, right? Because that's one of the, that's one way of, of framing this connecting of communities. It's like, yeah, right. I, I can. I can say something about that because I have experienced it. However, that experience came about, however long it was, you know, how immersive, etc. 
but but I know something about that other perspective. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe that's a place to put an end to this because I'm going Lindy hopping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well that's that's more neatly than i would have would have guessed we would be able to wrap it up so that's uh yeah. well done i'm kind of i'm kind of impressed <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah we done there a, and having a hard deadline really made a difference too because yeah. we could easily have just gone on another hour the way we usually do <laughs> um, we're, we're going we are going to you too yeah, are going i will to, now yes. <laughs> you will, you will. I look forward to having having some some words back on what you will continue to do. But yeah, thank Tasting you very honey. much for this. Tasting honey, mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, you're welcome and thank you. I look forward to, to doing it again and yeah. finding out where we go next time. Yeah, yeah. who knows? It was very nice. Excellent.